Oh yeah. We're going to talk about the Honda Goldwing service manual. Is this something you need to go out and buy or is it just a waste of money? Well, I'm going to give you my opinion right after this. Hey everybody, I'm Cruise Man. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about the Honda Goldwing service manual. But before I get into it, and I am going to get into it, but before I do, I just want to remind you, if you love motorcycles, you like riding, you like working on them, you enjoy how-to videos, tips and tricks, accessory reviews, moto vlogs, you're in the right place. You might as well go ahead and click that subscribe button right now because you know you want to do it. And don't forget to click the bell icon because that way YouTube lets you know when we come out with new videos. I should mention to those of you that do not own a Honda Goldwing, this video today is going to be pretty specific to the Honda Goldwing. So just a heads up right off the bat. And for those of you that do own a Honda Goldwing, if you'll hang on this video till the very end, I'm going to tell you a way you can save some money. What about this thing? Well, it is a beast of a manual. Look at the size of this thing. It, it, it's got to be three or four or 5,000 pages. It, it weighs at least 50 pounds. It, the thing is huge. It's just full of everything you'd ever want to know and a lot of things you don't want to know about your Honda Goldwing. Now, one of the questions I get all the time on YouTube, I get emails, I get Facebook questions. Hey, Cruise Man, should I buy the Honda Goldwing service manual? First of all, everybody that buys a Goldwing gets the Honda owner's manual. And it's got some great information. In fact, I'd say 50% of the questions that I get can be answered in the owner's manual. It's just most people never take the time to read it. But it's really got some good information. And it's written for a consumer. It's written for a motorcycle enthusiast. The service manual, by contrast, is written for a Honda service tech. It's written for a professional mechanic professional in quotes. And it is very good at telling you what needs to be done to complete a specific task, but it's not very good at telling you how to do it or step by step how to do it. So I'm going to suggest that if you're a highly technical person, maybe you're a mechanic and you have a lot of mechanical background, you're planning on doing some really serious repair work on your Goldwing in the future or currently. For example, let's say you've ordered the traction suspension upgrade from Traction Dynamics and you're going to install it yourself where you're going to need to remove the gas tank, you're going to need to do a lot of stuff. I'd say you probably need the service manual, especially if you're going to say, say you're going to remove the engine from the frame or you're going to tear down the engine or do something like that. Yeah, you need the service manual. You obviously have the skills uh, and you just need the information. This service manual costs about $165, so it's not cheap. By the time you pay shipping, tax, you're probably looking at close to $200 to get the service manual. And for the average typical Goldwing owner who rides his motorcycle, but he wants to maintain it, maybe he wants to change his oil, change his air filter, maybe brake pads, brake fluids, just general maintenance things, you're going to be better off with a set of my maintenance videos than you are with the service manual. Because the maintenance videos are going to show you step by step how to do things. Whereas this manual really doesn't. It just tells you what you need to do. Now, let me give you an example. When I first got my 2018 Goldwing, I needed to remove the center panel switch, or what some people call the console, because I needed to install the Homelink system. I waited till I got the service manual. The service manual shows you a picture of the, con of the console or the center panel switch kind of hovering above the bike. It's already been removed. And it's a drawing. It's really not a photo. It's just a drawing. Here's the instructions you get in the service manual. Remove the center panel switch assembly by releasing its hole 
from the snap fit clip. If you've never removed a center panel switch before and seen the underside of it, you have no way in hell of knowing what they're talking about here. What do they mean, releasing its hole? What hole? Where's the hole? From the snap fit clip. Where's the snap fit clip? Okay, yeah, it's accurate. It does tell you what to do, but is it, and it doesn't really accurately describe the process of doing it. There is a tiny little graphic that shows that you need to push this thing forward to release it. But it's very uh, obscure and not intuitive at all. That's why in my maintenance video, I talk about how important it is that you push the center console, the center panel switch forward before you lift it off. Now, here's how the instructions should have been written by Honda. But again, they're not writing this for a consumer. They're writing this for a mechanic. Here's what I would have written. Number one, slide the center panel switch assembly forward so the hole in the base is over the snap clip. Number two, pull up on the center panel switch assembly to release it from the snap clip. That is an accurate way of describing how to do something. And the video shows you step by step how to do this. Now, why is that important? Because if you read the service manual and you have no other frame of reference of how to remove this center panel switch, you just know it's supposed to come off. But it's tight. It's on there because you haven't slipped it forward yet. It's locked in place, basically. But you don't know that. You might just think the snap clip is tight. So what do you do? You go get a big-ass screwdriver, and you start cranking on it, and guess what? You'll get it off, but you'll crack the base of your center panel switch doing it. So you could damage a very expensive part. That center panel switch is $750 plus to replace. You can't just replace the base. You have to replace the whole thing. So my videos and what I show you how to do right there could save you $750 in a broken part. And there's a dozen other examples I could give you just like that in this service manual. That if all you have is the service manual, you're not going to know what to do. You're going to know, well, you're going to know what to do. You're not exactly going to know how to do it. So the videos are designed to walk a consumer, an average guy, a novice through all of these steps, step by step, and showing you how they're done. Also, the videos can be updated with new information. If we come up with better ways of doing something, we update the video and it's all included in the price. You don't have to, you don't have to buy a new set of videos to get the new information. It's updated automatically and we'll let you know with new information. They can't do that with this book. There's no way they're going to ship you a whole new manual or even a, an addendum. Each of my videos tell you right up front exactly what tools you're going to need to use to complete the task. The manual doesn't tell you that. It assumes you're a mechanic, that you've got a tool chest full of tools and you know what to use. I don't assume that. Now, the manual does give you all of the torque specs for the different bolts and the various fasteners, but so do my videos. If you're performing a function that requires a torque wrench, I tell you on the screen and verbally what the torque specs are for those bolts. So you're getting the good stuff from the manual that you really need without the complexity of the manual. So the manual costs, by the time you pay the tax and the shipping, you're probably going to spend $200 to get the manual. You can buy my videos for that. If, you're, if you own a 2018 plus Goldwing, it's about the same price as the service manual. And if you have a 2001 to 2017 Goldwing, it's about half the price of a service manual. So you're money ahead. Now, does that mean you shouldn't buy the service manual? Well, not necessarily, but you wouldn't want to buy it instead of the videos. You would buy it in addition to the videos. If you feel like you want to have this, it's a nice read. I mean, it's a nice, not a nice read. It's a nice thing to have but it's not necessary for most people. You get the satisfaction of knowing that you did the job and you got the job done right. Now let's talk about not just the service manual, 
but the service tech that's behind the service manual. You may not know this, but most Honda service techs, they may work on one, two, three, none gold wings a year. They may not work on any gold wings because they're a low volume dealer or they're in a remote area. They don't sell a lot of gold wings, so they just don't work on gold wings. If that's the Honda dealer in your area, that's what you're stuck with. Do you really want to take your twenty-five dollars or $30,000 motorcycle to a dealership and have some 19 or 20 year old guy that his passion is dirt bikes or sport bikes, not gold wings. Gold wings are in his mind, gold wings are for old men and who cares? Do you want that guy working on your $25,000, $30,000 motorcycle? And he has very little experience, if any, working on a Goldwing on something this sophisticated? Well, I don't. So I have worked on a lot of Goldwings that were donor bikes. I've, you know, installed accessories on a lot of motorcycles. And I get bikes from Dream Machines or maybe a local uh, rider will bring his bike by to let me use it in a video. And I'll start taking the bike apart and I'll see all these fasteners missing. There's broken parts here. There's broken parts there. Plastic missing, bolts missing, screws missing. And he'll say, hey, I've never touched the bike. I always take it to the dealer. They worked on the bike when I got the bike or whatever. So don't think that you're getting this highly sophisticated service tech just because you're going to a Honda dealership. You may. You may, have, you may be lucky and have a really great service tech where you are. But a lot of people don't. Another thing, service techs make money. They make, they're paid a commission. So the faster they get your bike out the door, the more money they're going to make. So do you really want somebody working on your bike that A, might not have the experience necessary to work on the bike, or B, is in a hurry and just trying to throw it back together in a hurry, get it out the door? I want to make sure it's done right. I don't care how long it takes because I'm riding on two wheels. It's dangerous enough anyway. I don't need the added concern of, did that guy tighten my axle bolt correctly before his cell phone rang because his girlfriend was calling him about lunch or something? Anyway, I told you if you hung around to the end of the video, I'd tell you a way to save some money. I'm going to tell you how to save some money. I'm going to put a promotion code on the screen. And if you do not already own my maintenance videos and you want to purchase them for your use, you can do so using this promotion code and you'll save 20%. That will bring the price of, vid of the videos down below the price of this service manual, at or below. So anyway, please put in the comments down below, what do you think of the service manual? What do you think of this video? If you like it, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it because it really helps out with the YouTube algorithms when you give it a thumbs up. Thanks again for joining me. I will see you the next time on the next Cruise Man's Garage.